Hello guys, this is K. Vishal Jain, your faculty for ACC FR and SBR paper. Guys, today I'm here to discuss with you a very, very, very important uh, yet confusing topic for all of you that is treatment of dividend in case of group accounts. Now, what exactly is the treatment of when the parent gives the dividend, the subsidiary company gives the dividend or when the associate company gives the dividend, the treatment or the calculation in group SOFP, group P&L adjustments, how exactly to present it, how exactly to calculate it. I'll discuss each and everything. Just watch this video till the end to get the complete conceptual clarity over the concept of dividend. Yeah, one point that if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe the channel so that you get important updates and the important information about ACCA, FR and SBR paper. So let's start the discussion now. Now coming to the first case when the dividend is paid by subsidiary company. So understand, uh, let's suppose parent owns 80% of subsidiary. Okay, and the remaining 20% is being held by NCI. And subsidiary company pays a dividend of dollar 200 meaning thereby parent company receives 80 percent of 200 that is dollar 160 so in the individual fs of parent company parent company would have recognized this is as investment income in p and l and subsidiary company when paying dividend would have recognized the dividend paid in retained earnings meaning thereby this would have decreased the retained earnings of the subsidiary company so this is the treatment in the individual financial statements of the parent and the subsidiary i believe that is very much clear but now when we prepare group accounts tell me can we record transaction among ourselves no so basically we have to eliminate the intra group transactions now and dividend being one of the intra group transactions because subsidiary company has paid something to a uh, parent company which parent company has recognized as income so what we have to do if the question asks us to prepare group p and l we have to eliminate this dividend income from the group p and l this is the only treatment if the question asks us the group p and l so in the group p and l we just need to eliminate the dividend income which is recognized by the parent company but be careful that you are eliminating only the parents share of dividend many a times i have seen students making mistake that they are eliminating the entire dividend paid by the subsidiary no parent has received only its own share so eliminate only the parents share of dividend from the investment income of parent so this is how you will present so understand first of all reduce in group p and l reduce 160 from group p and l investment income how it will be presented so understand this is group PNL. So PNL of parent individual, PNL of subsidiary individual adjustment. So investment income of parent, investment income of subsidiary. This investment income of parent will have 160 as investment income recognized. So what you have to do, you have to eliminate this 160 here, and this will be the final figure of group PNL investment income. This is the only treatment in group PNL of pair of the group. Okay, group PNL from the point of view of dividend paid by the subsidiary. This is the only adjustment. I believe it is clear to everyone. Now comes the question, what exactly is the impact in group SOFP? Now the similar adjustment will be done here also since parent has recognized this dividend as income, hence we will reduce the income of parent that is console RE by the parent share of dividend. Also, we will reduce NCI by the NCI share of dividend because NCI also would have received 20% of dividend, right? So we'll reduce NCI as well. But now comes the question, sir, you said that uh, since we are preparing group accounts, we'll eliminate intra-group transactions. And we understand that parent and subsidiary are a part of the group and hence we are eliminating this. But NCI is not a part of the group. Then why are you eliminating NCI share of dividend? The reason here is what exactly is meant by NCI. NCI means the amount that we have to pay to NCI. The amount which NCI owns in our company, which we have to pay. Now, if we have actually paid some amount to NCI, don't you think we will reduce the NCI by that amount? Right, so that's the logic. So if we have paid uh, NCI the dividend, so its share of dividend will be reduced from NCI. So now the presentation will be such. So basically, what we'll do is we will uh, reduce console RE. We'll reduce console RE by parent share of dividend. We'll reduce NCI by NCI share of dividend. I believe it is very much clear to all of you. Now understand, uh, in case of subsidiary, we also prepare analysis of profits of subsidiary or we say uh, that is a statement of net assets wherein we analyze what is the net assets on date of acquisition, what is the change of net assets post acquisition, okay, wherein we say that this is a post 
एक्विजिशन प्रॉफिट अर्ड बाय सब्सिडरी कंपनी नाउ इफ यू आर कैलकुलेटिंग द पोस्ट एक्विजिशन प्रॉफिट अर्ड बाय सब्सिडरी एज अ मूवमेंट बिटवीन द ओपनिंग आर ई एंड द क्लोजिंग आर ई प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दिस पॉइंट गाइज दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट ओके एंड जनरली आई हेव सीन नाइनटी नाइन परसेंट स्टूडेंट्स मेकिंग मिस्टेक इन दिस एरिया सो अंडरस्टैंड so when you are calculating the post acquisition profits of subsidiary and the question is giving you the opening re and the closing re and you are calculating the profit as a movement between the two so you need to understand this movement is impacted by the dividend paid why because you see dividend when the subsidiary company pays adjusts it from re right so this would have decreased the re this would have decreased the re so this movement would have decreased by the amount of dividend paid not to calculate the correct amount of post acquisition profits you have to add back the dividend to the post acquisition movement okay but understand be careful if the question is directly giving you that this is the profit earned in the post acquisition period then don't make this adjustment then don't make this adjustment okay then don't add back the dividend see understand for post acquisition change of net asset that is the post acquisition profits of subsidiary if the question gives you that retained earning on date of acquisition retained earning on reporting date okay then what you have to do is you have to add back the dividend you have to add back dividend to arrive at the correct amount of post acquisition profits but if the question directly gives you post acquisition profits then no treatment i believe you are very much clear on these things so now understand i am just helping you in revising so if the question is on group pnl only one treatment reduce the parent share of dividend from the investment income in group pnl if the question is on group sofp three adjustments reduce consol re by parent share of dividend reduce nci by nci share of dividend and if and if third one is optional okay third one is optional understand if the question gives you opening re and closing re of subsidiary it means this movement is impacted by the dividend paid so add back the dividend to the movement to arrive at the correct amount of profits i believe it is very much clear to all of you now so this is the treatment when the subsidiary companies pays the dividend to parent company now comes another scenario what happens when the parent company gives dividend then what exactly is the treatment so understand when parent company gives dividend parent company will give dividend to its investors are those investors part of the group no understand this is the situation see this is parent this is subsidiary okay now parent would have someone would have invested in the parent company right someone would have invested in the parent company are they part of the group no 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 unless otherwise question specifically mentions they are not a part of the group so if parent company is giving dividend to anyone else they are not intra group and there is no specific treatment to be done in the group accounts but yes if the question says that parent company has given the dividend but parent company has not recorded this transaction itself then yes there will be a treatment for that but otherwise there is no specific treatment in the group accounts okay there is no specific treatment in the group accounts now if parent company has given the dividend but has not recorded this transaction then what will you do you have to decrease the retained earnings and record dividend payable and then dividend payable account debit to bank so journal entry will move like this re account debit to dividend payable then dividend payable account debit to bank since this is uh, this does not have any intra group transaction so it doesn't have any specific impact on group accounts okay if parent company has recognized the dividend paid by the parent company properly then there is no specific treatment in the group accounts okay whether it be group p and l or group sfp or presentation or anything it doesn't have any impact on it okay no treatment in group fs however if parent company has not recorded the same in sfs then reduce consol re by 100% of the dividend paid by the parent company i believe that is very much clear to all of you now comes the third scenario what is the treatment when associate company gives dividend uh, now uh, let's assume that parent uh, company holds 30% of associate company and associate company has given a total dividend of dollar 200 meaning thereby parent would have received 30% of 200 as dividend that is dollar 60 which parent company would have recognized as investment income in the individual fs of the parent company right now when we are preparing group pnl when we are preparing group pnl 
Now for associate, what do we do? We just say one line item share of profit of associate on an accrual basis. Whatever is the profit earned by associate, what is my share of profit? We recognize that. So in group PNL, we eliminate the dividend from associate. Rather, we recognize the share of profit of associate. So what will happen in group PNL? So investment income, we will remove, we will eliminate this dividend received from associate. Rather, we will recognize share of profit of associate. Rather, we'll recognize share of profit of associate. So this is the treatment in group PNL. Now comes the question, what is the treatment in group SOFP? So when the question asks you the group SOFP, then definitely you will reduce the parent's share of dividend from console RE. Okay, parent share of dividend from console RE. Rather, you will recognize share of profit of associate. And similarly, you will reduce this dividend from the investment as well why what is the meaning of this investment this investment in associate means this is the net amount that we expect to recover from associate but now if we have recovered some amount definitely it will reduce my investment okay so that's why we will reduce this dividend from the investment and we'll add we will add rather than this dividend we will add the share of profit of associate company so this is the overall treatment of dividend either paid by the parent subsidiary or the associate in case of group sofp and group pnl i believe this would have helped you and cleared your entire concept surrounding the dividend but if you have any further queries do write down in the chat box or the comment box i will definitely try to help you out with that thank you guys bye bye